Hi, in this session we are going to discuss controlling of the program execution during debugging. That is basically the use of step over, step into and step return in Eclipse debugging. So let's go to Eclipse, open a simple program called debugperson.java. In debugperson.java, we have a simple main method and few lines of code. So let me first explain this program and later on while we are going to debug this program, we would understand the usage of step over, step into and step return. So inside main method in line number 11, we can see a class data util is used over here and its method get person data is invoked and data util dot get person data in turn returns a list of person objects and this list is named as person list so line number 11 retrieves a list of person objects from a method called get person data of data util in the next line, that is line number 12, the specific person list is printed. In the next line, that is line number 13, similarly, another utility method inside data util called getPersonMap is invoked. And this particular method called getPersonMap returns another map object which has integer object as its keys and person objects as its values. So this key value pair comes from data util dot get person map method. And in the next line that is line number 14, this map object that is person map is printed in the console using sysout. So overall, this is the structure of the program. Now let's have a brief look into the person object first and later on we would go into the details of the methods like get person data and get person map so let's first go to person object so go on top of person object select control and click on person as we can see over here the person class is a pretty simple pojo kind of class with three fields string name int age and string country and it has a public constructor which takes these three parameters and assigns them uh, to these fields so overall that is the structure of person and it has also has its uh, getter and setter methods those are not important at this point of time so let me close person.java now we would have a brief look at get person data first and then get person map. So let me go to get person data. So click control and click this particular method. Here in get person method, I mean, sorry, get person data method. What we can see from line number 27 to line number 33 Many person objects are created with different values of uh, the name, age, and country. And this person objects uh, are created from line number 27 to 33, as mentioned. And in line, line number 35, a list of person objects is created, a blank array list is created. And finally, all these person objects are added to this list object. And finally, that person list is returned. So it's a pretty simple method which creates few person objects, adds them to a particular list, and finally returns that list of person objects. Now, just below get person data, we have get person map method, which is also used in debug person. In line number 46 and 47, we can see two person objects are created. In line number 48, a hash map is created which takes integer as its key and a person object as its value and in line number 49 and 50 what we can see 
1 and 2 is entered as the key and this person object called Steve is entered uh, put into this map as value object against the key of 1 and this person object called Martin is put as the value object against the key 2 in line number 50 and finally this map object is returned back. So if I close data util overall we can understand what is the structure of debug person dot java uh, what are the functionalities of this methods and um, what is the structure of person object so things are pretty clear now now we can focus on debugging so let me put a breakpoint just uh, at the end of this program say at line number 14 Now, let me run this program in debug mode. Let me also uh, put breakpoint at uh, line number 11 and uh, line number 13 and run this particular program in debug mode. So, what I can do, right click, debug as Java application. Now the first breakpoint at line number 11 is hit. Now it is paused over here. So let's go to the top and we have three very important buttons step into, step over and step return. Step return is right now disabled. And let's first focus on step over as it is simpler and more commonly used compared to step into and step return. Uh, as we can see, step over has a shortcut of uh, F6. You can press F6 instead of clicking this button. Now, what step over does is when a particular program is paused at a particular breakpoint, if step over is pressed, then that particular line gets executed and the control flows to the next line and there the control is paused which means the control is currently now paused at line number 11 now if I press step over this particular line number 11 would get executed and the control would be pausing at line number 12 so let me click on step over as you can see over here now the control is paused at the next line Similarly, if I click on uh, step over once again, the control would go to line number 13 and line number 12 would get executed. So let me click on step over once again. As you can see, line number 12 got executed. So this sysout got executed. You can see in the console, the person list is printed. And it is paused at line number 13. Now we have learned the use of step over. Now what is the use of step into? Step into has the shortcut of F5. When there is a method invocation at a particular line as here we are invoking a method called data util dot get person map and if y if we want to directly go into this particular method then step into is useful means if we press step into over here the control would directly go inside this particular method so let me press step into as you can see over here the control has directly gone inside get person map methods first line without providing any particular breakpoint inside this method. Now we can go line by line through this method using step over or we can return back to where we were inside debug person .java. Now if we have a look at the top step return is now enabled earlier it was disabled. 
Why it is enabled now? Because step return is just the opposite of step into. Whenever you are inside a particular method, you have gone down one level and you want to return back to where you were, then step return is useful. So if we want to go back to debug person from here at one single shot, then we can use step return. What we can do from here is we can press uh, step over one by one and finally this line will be executed and we can go back to debug person dot java but without doing that if i press step return all of these lines would get executed and the flow would go back to where it was so let me press step return as you can see the control has come back now if i press step over now the control would go to the next line that is line number 14. so overall we have learned what is the use of step over f6 step into and step return these three buttons are very important whenever we are uh, debugging a particular program and we want to move to different sections. So earlier we learned about uh, resume, that is F8. So resume is very important. Terminate we also have learned and step into, step over and step return. These are also very vital whenever we are controlling any, any uh, a program in debug mode so we can from here if we want to end this program we can press step over so this line would get executed or we can press resume as well so the program would finally uh, finish so let me press resume the program has ended so briefly that's all about step into step over and step return we would learn more about this buttons or the switches uh, as we go along with different examples and features in next sessions. So bye for now. Thank you